Welcome to the June 19, 2018 Sunderland Elementary School Committee meeting at 6 and or so because of me. Um, so uh, we uh, start today with, I believe, the reorg. Um, and so I will um, turn it over to Patty while we to take us through that. And then we'll okay, so we need nominations for chair of the school committee. So we need someone to make a motion and a second to nominate someone for chair. I will not be offended if somebody is interested in being chair. <laughs> I don't. Um, yeah, I'm happy to continue or not continue, honestly. How long have you been chair? Long time, I think. I think. Uh huh. You've been chair a long time, yeah. Uh, two, three. What is it? What do you think? Four. Think four? Yeah. Was it before? Maybe before. Yeah. yeah. So. Is there anybody who has I mean, interest? honestly, um, it's um, there's like a couple things that um, other than than you know running the meetings. Um, in the meetings, there's not a lot of extra duties or responsibilities of the chair, you know. Yeah, you know, yeah. occasional thing, occasional like, you know, um, you know, making if, if there's something like warrants that urgently need to be signed. Pass them down, they can start signing. We should have done uh, that while you were not here, but I wasn't paying attention. So, um, I don't, I don't have any shit at all. I'm still wrestling with trying yeah. to get through yeah. uh, rec yeah. softball and fire department on Tuesday nights as well. Yeah. I got one more year rec softball than that, but that, I think yeah. like, things clear up for me, but I, just, I have no interest at this point. Greg, you've been vice chair yeah. for how many years now? I know. And if I didn't have stuff going on yeah. in my family, yeah. I would be, yeah. I'd be doing it. I mean, I still could. Yeah. I mean, my, um, yeah. I'm just not, here's what you would have to understand. If I become chair, I am going to be not super reliable as far as showing up on short, you know, I may have stuff come up on right. short notice. Right. Other than that, I could do it. So it's possible. I don't know. I mean, okay. we also have, we have Maisie, we have Peter, we have other options. I don't know. Maisie doesn't want Maisie's it. She's good. shaking her head. <laughs> Maisie, doesn't Maisie doesn't want it. I mean, I, I could do it. I haven't been on the committee very long and I don't know if that's a problem or not. Um, I'm not dying to do it, even though, you know, I didn't know if you have a bunch of stuff you do outside the committee in terms of regular, you know, meetings with any of the administration or anything like that. Um, Honestly, I mean, I, you know, no more or less than I did before I was chair. So, uh, I mean, occasionally checking in on agenda items, but usually that's stuff that, you know, you know, if there's particular things we're, we're discussing that. In right. the meeting before, right? Um, so, um, so it, yeah. There isn't. I mean, you know. Again, I think it's kind of. I mean, I guess I would say I'm not looking for it, but I would do yeah. it if yeah. nobody else wanted. Well, to do what about? I mean, for this year, we could do if you wanted. If you took chair and I was vice chair, so any of those times, and you drop it on me, and then you, you'd be, or or you know, <laughs> potentially you would be ready to in a year or whatever to. To the next cycle, or you know, the, we, yeah, it's not like it around. can't happen yeah. partway through the year too. If we just, you know, if we need to. All right. So you're so you you you're, so, so I'm, not, you, you're, I'm nominating Greg Gutschak. Okay. Can I get a second? <laughs> second. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. So um, D F Keith M um, to nominate G G. And are there any other nominations? Any discussion on that? Okay, so we'll close nominations and we will take a vote um, to make Greg Gottschalk chair of the uh, Sunderland Elementary School for the 18-19 school year. Everyone, aye or nay? Aye. Aye. Bill 500.
Okay, so now, Greg, the meeting gets turned over to you. <coughs> so you have, do you have your agenda? Oh. <laughs> All right, now you're going to take mine. Outstanding. <laughs> All right, so ne the next thing we're going to do is take do the same thing. Would you pass this down to him? Yep. It is, um, so now you, what you would do now is take nominations um, for vice chair. Indeed. Do I hear any nominations for vice chair of the Sunderland School Committee? I thought I so, I mean, I, if you, I mean, again, if you want, because, yeah. I'm familiar, and when you can't be there yeah. for now, and then, and then we'll start to. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. I heard. I heard. Someone needs Doug to mention. nominate. Nominate. Oh, go ahead. I'll nominate Doug. Outstanding. Colton. Second vice chair. Second chair. Yay. DF. Any? Uh, oh. Any you discussion? Any yeah. other? Or other, any uh, other, other nominations? Discussion. All in favor? All right. Yay. All right. Let's see. Let's see how there's that. Do you have that? If it, on page like three or four, it's got the then there's secretary. Yeah. I can, and actually, she's got it all written out, so I can help you, Greg, on this. So yeah. now you would need a, a motion and a second to nominate someone for secretary of the school committee. I have a sheet. You got it right there. That's the sheet she's working off of this guy. Ah, this one. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we need a, uh, let's see. No, I see. And currently, our, say, Maisie Shaw is our secretary. Indeed. Looking for a nomination for secretary. Yeah, May Maisie. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Who seconded it? Yeah. I did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so discussion nominees yeah. or vote? Uh, the nominees. All right, discussion? Vote. All in favor? All right. Yeah. Now the right. next ones are appointments that you make. I make appointments? Yes. All right. So um, right currently our Frontier Rep is Keith McFarland. And I don't know who our I, I I think um, I don't think we have a yeah, collaborative rep. Yeah, Michelle. Michelle. Michelle was yeah. the collaborative rep. Peter, that might be a good one for you. <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> idea what it is. We belong to a collaborative, and you go to their board meetings, and so every member town sits on that board um, for the collaborative, and I guess they feed you, um, which is always uh, a major. And they meet like on on Tuesday nights, and it's, it's um, once every two months. Once the, every the two meetings. months, and through the. Right, and then they're also off for the summer. So it's not a ton of meetings. I did it for years. Um, it's interesting. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, the collaborative provides service, services to, it's, it's Hampshire, it used to be just Hampshire, now it's Hampshire and Franklin. Um, uh, training programs, there's lots of stuff. A lot of PD for our teachers. Yep, professional development stuff. They hold the statewide contract for um, educating children in DYS services. Yep. Um, they also do, um, they do, they have special ed programs that we send some of our kids have, to. Have you been going this year, Keith? I didn't know that. that uh, no, Keith's the frontier rep. Um, no, he's down here under collaborative. He's listed. Yeah. yeah I don't know, know my name. How, I don't know how this thing maybe be. When, when Michelle, Michelle left. left. Yeah, my name got put in there. Because I, I looked at that, I was like, how I didn't happen? know that that was me. <laughs> um, yeah. So before we get there, um, the frontier rep. Do you want to, can, Keith, can you? I'm happy continuing to do it. All right, let's point to uh, the proud frontier rep. Okay. Yeah. And uh, same for the, the Union 38 uh, voting representatives. They also you appoint point. them. All right. Interest? You already got one vote. Right. So there's three votes. There's three votes. You I mean, I, I think it's good for you, for the chair, for the sure. Chair. Right. For sure. Um, and then, um, but. And I don't care. I, you know, I'll go to the meetings. I, I don't. I don't feel compelled to have a vote. So, <laughs> so I'm careful for a vote. Either. It doesn't seem to make a difference so far. So I don't. 
care. <laughs> well, you attend, so I mean, that's I do you're attend, ever, so. It, it's good because you go. I mean, right. when you have a voting member that doesn't show up, you're moving you, under you, you a little yeah, bit of power. Yeah, yeah. So I'm happy doing it if you want, but I have no need for it. Well, you're in there now. Like, that sounds like, sounds, sounds sounds like, like a nomination. Like no, but then who was not going to, who was the three people going to be? You and... Yeah, that's fine. That's so that'll be you, Greg, and Maisie. Okay. That's voting members. Okay. And so we still have the collaborative representative, and then uh, Maisie is currently the school council liaison. And Maisie, you care to continue on school council? Yeah, that's fine. That sounds good. Collaborative. Now we get back to the sales job. Mm -hmm. You want to go back and do that, uh, Doug? You've got some experience. To, I'm just not sure. I mean, I, part of my interest is I end up going to a lot of town, you know, town meetings and stuff like that. And so I don't feel like I'm dodging my duties or something. I'll, no. I'll do it if you want me to do it. Okay. But it's not really my interest. Okay. okay. Um, whereas the stuff I go to is, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's, it's useful, but it's also something that I, you know, have an interest in. And so I can try taking them back on the collaborative. I just don't know, you know, I, 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 I mean, the only, the only thing is whether I go there and I learn something, but I'm not sure what good I do for the school there. Yeah. That's my only concern. Um, one meeting every two months doesn't bother me. That's that's something that's in the realm that I can do too. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not going to be here in the summer. Right. So I, won't call I don't know that they meet in the summer. They do meet in the summer. I know there's a meeting coming up because they've, they've got a, a structural deficit right now. So I know there's a meeting coming up. I mean, and that's the other thing. We've got members on the other committees. So if whoever is on this committee doesn't go, we get the information from the other committees that we can report. Right. So, um, um, yeah, I can take it back on for now and, and then I'll um, see, maybe I'll look to, you know, and, and if it's, not working in my schedule, I'll, well, I'll talk and try to recruit and somebody else. Like, okay. Um, so if he drops the ball and you start filling in for him. Well, let's say. Sure Anyone want to do a policy for collaborative uh, going once? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, yeah, the policy area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The policy area. No, no, no. Take this. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but as a teacher, as a professional, you. You'd probably be a great ad, whether you're officially there or not. Mm -hmm. You'd be a great ad to collaborate. Oh, okay. So you're going to appoint Keith to the policy? No, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, it sounds like Doug, we're going to appoint to the policy. Or sorry, ad. No, collaborative. The collaborative. Yeah. Doug the collaborative. Right. Yeah. All right. Keith may go once in a while, and uh, I don't imagine I'll get anyone else to take policy, so I'll. I'll nominate myself. Okay. okay so, so I don't have that page now, so make sure you, you, you write your, circle your name yes. that you're going to stay. Yep. And then I, is there, on that sheet, is there also um, the reps for the, uh, uh, do we have to do what you call it this time? Negotiation? I did not see that on this list. Okay. Well, those are coming up. Those are coming up, so we'll probably do that in the fall. Okay. All right. Yeah. Proving minutes of the previous meeting that we're at. Mm -hmm. yep. Entertain a, a motion to uh, approve the minutes of the meeting of uh, Tuesday, May 15th. Uh, so moved. Second. Outstanding. Take a moment and. Any discussion? Not for me. No. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 I have the executive session minutes, if you can hand those down, and I need to collect them back. They need to be shredded. So we're approving the approval of the minutes, yes. Do we, these are now public? No, we no. haven't released no. them. That's a separate. So do we need to go into executive session to no. approve them? No. Nope. 
Okay. If we gonna if we were gonna release them, we would. Okay. If you have a specific comment that we have to discuss pertaining to them, that this is maybe a separate matter. Right. Matter, right? Okay. No comment. And these are just all they were just all approving, and so now you're approving the approvals, and then they'll come up for release. So so moved. Outstanding. Sounds like Keith is a second. I am a second. Outstanding. All in favor? Aye. 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 I can't vote right. I'm sorry. You abstain. I'm gonna abstain. Okay. If I could get that right. back. Trying to say so organized. Oh, I love it. There's also the <laughs> It's just. <laughs> it's such a process. No doubt. The cafeteria team leader. Punted. Um, you've skipped over financial statements. <laughs> here, 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 Outstanding. I'm also good at keeping you in line. Outstanding. Financial statements and sign warrants. All right, we're signing away. Yes, so you have eight warrants tonight that total 69737.54, along with the summer payroll warrants so that we don't have to hunt you down every two weeks um, to do payroll. Um, but we will be calling people to come and sign warrants in July and August. That's what we do. We come to the main office and sign them when we get them ready. Uh, an email will go out and whoever. We just need three out of the five. So, Keith, I know you're not going to be around, so we will we'll still email you, but you. we won't expect to see you. Um, unless you're on TV catching a shark. Um, <laughs> I want to also give you an update on the school lunch program. Right now, we're running a deficit of 5,868.06. At the same time last year, our deficit was only 3,940.28. So I know it looks like we're not going in the right direction, but we did have the one time of consultant cost this year that was 14,718.64. So if we say, if we were saying we didn't have that one time cost, we would right now be making a profit about $8,800. So our program- Even if we'd had some salary? We've got the salary for the, the shared F, uh, the food service director, but that's coming out of our general fund now. Right, okay. Okay, so- Okay, um, okay. okay. So I heard gotcha. So we're on the right, I, I think we're on the right track. Yeah. Um, also, right now our uh, uncollectible lunch balance is about $4,900, and last year at this time it was about $5,900. So we're doing a little bit better. So having, I think having the um, Meals Plus has helped our reporting be better, um, and it's helping us collect our, our debt a little bit better. Um, this year, I'm not going to be recommending that we take money from the general ledger budget to put the school lunch balance whole because um, Mr. Gagarin asked a question a couple months ago um, that led me down an investigative trail because he said there was, a, there was a balance in school lunch. So what was happening was... If I asked what the school lunch balance was this year and I was told $6,500, we would take $6,500 and put it in there. But what wasn't happening was the year before, if the bad debt was $5,000, that $5,000 is still sitting in that $6,500. She, she wasn't deducting it out. It wasn't being deducted out. And I was unaware of that. So we sort of double paid. So we have a balance in our school lunch program. So I do not think it's necessary this year to use our monies to put them in there because we are whole right now. And in fact, we got written up because we have too much money in there. So we're um, going to be looking to buy a new, uh, I think a new piece of equipment in the, we did a washer and dryer already in there and we're going to be looking to buy um, another piece of equipment. And we've also applied for a grant through the Place 60. We did this last year and we unfortunately didn't get it. But all this, um, Mary has applied for a grant for all the schools for us to get um, some pretty heavy duty blender so we can start uh, serving smoothies. So we're hoping, keeping our fingers crossed that we get that grant. Um, Mr. Barshevsky and I had a conversation. So if you look on page six, the balance in our general ledger, uh, in our general fund is $107,048.82. The amount of warrants that are applicable to this fund are 27276 
which is leaving us about 79,772 to get us through the rest of June. So there are going to be bills that come in from today until the end of the year. Um, and so we'll have to take care of those. And then we talk about what we're going to do with any leftover funds. <clears throat> so the things um, that Ben and I talked about today were definitely <laughs> replacing the carpet in the front office. It, 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 it needs to be replaced. Um, maybe doing another two rooms of window shades. Boning up on our technology. Yeah. And the other idea that I had is that we could take some payroll off of school choice and put it on our general fund and free us up a little bit more cash and give us a little bit more leeway in case we get any move-in students over the summer that have special needs because that's what happened. We're dealing in another, uh, with one of our other sister schools, we had a move-in that we didn't budget for and now we gotta try to find money for next year for a kid with some pretty substantial needs. So, um, did you want to add anything to that, Ben? I Just um, a slight bit of clarification for the blinds, it would be to finish the west wing, so more than two rooms. Um, and I, I don't know what the exact dollar amount was, but um, I think 2,000 and change um, to finish the school. So the, that that was not our priorities. Um, so I don't know if if your pri if the school committee's priority would be first try to get some money back into school choice, and then do the carpets, and then do the technology, and then do the window shades. What do you mean by technology? Uh, so we are <laughs> smart boards are falling by the wayside, and they are becoming more and more expensive to replace bulbs. So we want to start. Um, moving to the new generation of smart board and they have a different name and I'm not, I'm not, I don't know the technical, the technological name of it. Um, so we're looking at maybe replacing some of those, also getting us more one-to-one -to -one devices so that Ben can have MCAS at more than one grade level at a time, maybe buy some carts um, for MCAS testing. Um, I'd have to check with Mr. S uh, Scott Paul to see where he, where he felt the technology money would best be spent here at um, Sunderland. We're, we're also looking to add um, laptop um, student computers for grades one and two. Um, we start with uh, Google accounts at grade three, um, so Chromebooks really don't apply to the younger grades. So um, what we did this past year, we outfitted all grade one through two classrooms with five laptops each. And during um, the workshop model for our classrooms, uh, take math for example, um, teachers were doing a small group lesson, while others were using Dreambox, um, others were playing an academic game, and the rotation really um, was nice. Um, so we're looking to add a few more laptops in each of those classrooms. So that would be a conversation between Ben and Scott yeah. as to where they felt the money would best be spent. But if you guys want to give me, um, like I said, it, it, I, I'm, I'm going to say we don't have more than twenty thousand dollars left in bills, which would leave us about sixty grand. So if you say to me, put twenty thousand back into school choice, I can do that, and then use the rest of the money as bet to re to do technology and get the carpets changed. How much do you think the car? I don't need that. I have no idea because I don't even know what you're talking about. The nurses you the wing too. Uh, the nurse's office does not have carpet, okay. so it would just be the whole front office. Front office and your off, uh, through yeah. your office. Yeah, okay. and the uh, room. I've got some questions. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, seems like the, the, the blinds is a relatively small cost. Yeah. I think the, the carpet would be, again, probably about the same as the blinds around there, and that's not relatively large. I think the, the smart boards is probably a big cost. Mm -hmm. I would like to see as much as possible going to school shows. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But just a little conversation about smart boards. Um, I do kind of have seen that ebbing of the use of them, and I'm wondering if it would be the best use to invest more money into the second generation of what might fall apart. Not necessarily fall apart, but fall by the wayside in a few years. Um, my own personal experience, and it's a little bit different because of the grade level, 
is much, much less use of the smart boards, which everybody used a lot because more it was the bells and whistles and interactive. It was part the first of it. generation. Yeah. Right. Um, projectors that are just projecting what's on your laptop screen you become more and more. Mm -hmm. um, That's what I was wondering about because mm -hmm. worthwhile. I mean, even in, you know, you can have something on a, you know, a tablet that, you know, got an interactive app that, you know, then goes through. Right. Do all our teachers have Apple. laptops? Have laptops? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. And it, I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be the laptop. I my, right. my desktop, I'm using constantly every day, mm -hmm. projecting for the kids. Um, mm -hmm. Different. The, the smart board allows you at times to go up and take like a pen and actually go right. up and do a little interaction with that, but that's almost gimmicky a little bit. Um, it, if, if you can hook a laptop up, and it's relatively easy to have an interface with the with the projector. They can still do as much right on the laptop as they would with like a special color pencil. On it, but right. so I'm just wondering if it it, something it does vary that. from classroom to classroom and teacher to teacher as to how much the interactive tool. And Scott's um, testing new ones. We've got some demos, and mm -hmm. he's testing new. He's been using them in his office, and him and Maureen uh, Belche and Stuart, um, they've all been testing them mm -hmm. and. Um, they haven't made a decision yet as to what um, version they're going to, but mm -hmm. if you would like me to find out and email you, I can well, do that. But also the bigger issue of like, if a teacher uses a lot and hasn't really integrated the curriculum, you know, that, that's one thing. And yeah. it's like, oh gee, I could get, I mean, I'm kind of going through my notes now too. I know we had issues with the uh, level sensor and the oil and uh, the issue with the, the motor for the, uh, the sewage, I know we were. Like, it's, it's the sewage encumbered. is taken care of. It's taken care of. It's yeah. already encumbered in these numbers before we talk but about the, it. The oil tank issues are still out there. I'm not aware of any oil tank issues. I thought there was. Wasn't there something at the last yeah, meeting? The level sensor for the. We decided just to add a fuel. There was. Um, yeah, and Bob provided us with a, a write up of a few different options. Well, he did not give me a PO to encumber. <laughs> Oh yeah, I have oil tank and oil delivery service problems. We're going to move forward on the injector pumps, but we're going to hold off until June on the oil tank and delivery service and boiler repair and boiler replacement. So the boiler repair has been done, and um, you signed the warrant tonight. And what we did was we asked um, the town administrator, Sherry Patch, if it was covered by insurance, and it was. So Outstanding. we paid a thousand dollar deductible, and the town paid and received from the insurance company three thousand nine hundred and twenty eight dollars. And you signed that tonight. Fantastic. So um, that was submitted to insurance and covered. Okay. Um, but I will, before we do anything, I will check with Bob um, about the oil tank because that has not come up on my radar. He did not bring that to my attention. I mean, I know we had a problem with the um, the gauge. I know yeah. that we had a problem with the gauge, but that was... I think it. there was like, it, I, I forgot to bring the thing with me, but there was like, the page was addressing the issues with the oil tank, and some were, seemed fairly trivial, like the gauge on the top didn't work or something like that, and then there was also a general issue of age, right? uh, age of the tank and whether there's sufficient defense against possible leakage at some point and whether we should be doing something, and it was sounded like... You know, other than the problems with the gauge, but the school was already putting on automatic delivery, so that was going to be less important. Right. Um, the questions about the age and the possible defenses against leaks were something that was like, you know, it wasn't hitting you right in the face like now the thing is leaking or something. Right. It was just a concern that down the road this is going to have to be dealt with. and. Um, I think that, and, and it sounded like that was enough money that... What was enough so, money? Well, if they really had to do serious stuff to the oil tank, you know, and... and uh, but I don't think the number was given, was it? I wish I'd brought yeah. the dumb paper with me. Well, I just sent him an email. He is on vacation, so I just asked him when he gets back, can you please give me whatever you gave the school committee okay. about the oil tanks and do, do we want to encumber anything first for that? Yeah, that's, that would be... We definitely want to get the gauge fixed, yep. without right. a doubt. Yeah, right. Because that's been the hesitancy of our head custodian of going to automatic delivery because he doesn't want them to overflow the tank because the gauge isn't working. Right. My suggestion would be that we, you know, tr come to agreement on a number for the, um, to put, 
to take off of choice, which I think is yeah. good to do. Right. And then, you know, you've heard our things about like, have Paul consider about whether the, whether the smart boards are really the way to go versus other kinds of technology or what teachers are really reliant on them currently and want to, you know, the, a lot of their lesson stuff works around it and want, you know, want to keep that. Anyway, heard some of these things and, and, and the, whatever potential needs with the oil tank and so on and, and, and just use, you know, your best judgment with, with those things that, that we've talked about. I was going, I didn't interrupt. No, I, um, I was just going to say you turn that into a motion. Yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> and I was going to actually recommend the same thing to the school committee. I mean, if we think about over the past few years, rarely have we had a surplus like yeah. this, yeah. right? So just because we have a surplus doesn't mean we should go wild spending, especially with the pattern that we've seen with school choice and those funds diminishing. So I, I mean, I think we need to be... Um, identify what the real issues are and, and spend the money in those areas, um, but then also be frugal in a sense and save that money right. just because, I mean, we see where it's where it's going. Right. And then the yeah. only way we can save it is to put it into school. Right. Right. Yeah, which would be great. And the other because thing, we know what we've got coming still. I, and while we were the talking, news of the, over the still. other thing that hasn't been billed is the last quarter for the central, your, your central office share of, their, of the fourth okay. quarter expenses, so that needs to get billed too. So. I, I would just say that, uh, you know, thinking back upon passing the override and so on, it wasn't, you know, it was a fairly modest override, okay? yeah. and it doesn't like mean, okay, now we got no problems. What exactly. it means is, we got to be even more careful because we can't go back to that well. Because we're not going to be going back. Okay. Right? And so, you know, I'm like, uh, yeah, absolutely in favor of, of, you know, doing what we can to, to restore the balance in the school choice fund because, you know, that's an area where it gives us some flexibility going yeah. forward. And, um, I, you know, I just, you know, I keep thinking, I mean, I worry about this stuff and I, I keep thinking, geez, you know, if we get into, uh, budget time this coming winter, and we've got, you know, because the way the numbers work out, we're taking fifty thousand less out of school choice than we did this time. And we have to go to the town and say, well, we got our normal step increases, and uh, you know, a few other things that are inflation or something like that. And then we got, oh yeah, we need another fifty thousand because we don't have the money in school choice. It's not going to, you know, I don't want to be in that situation. So, I think, I think the suggestion here. As far as restoring some money, there is great. Um, my sense on the oil tank is that other than the uh, monitoring thing, okay, that these were sort of all part of a pack. I mean, it says here replacement of oil spill containment at the exterior delivery location, right. repipe corroded oil lines in the mechanical room, replacement of the entire oil tank monitoring system. Installation of two monitoring wells, piping of oil line from some tank to the oil tank, excavation of dirt above the tank, new 32 by 7 concrete pad, and you total them all up and we're about 25 grand. Okay, and at that point, that's like we go to the town capital planning committee. Yeah. Yeah. If we determine that's, you know, top priority for the coming year, we go there because, you know, their deal is stuff's got to be at least 10 grand, okay, and it's got to be for at least five years. Okay, and so that clearly meets, meets that thing, and that shouldn't be coming out of normal operating budget. Right, mm -hmm. fair enough. I agree. Yep. Okay, so that's my thinking on that one. And then the other question I had is, Patty, I'm not sure I understood correctly the situation. Item number three, it says install boiler tempering pump to prevent thermal shock to the boilers. 3,650 3, each, total 7,300. Says this is related to issues we have had in the school with cracked boiler sections. Mm -hmm. right. We've had at least two instances where boiler sections have had to be replaced due to leaks caused by cracks. Um, it's likely these cracks were caused or at least worsened by thermal shock to the boilers. Adding the component to at least one of the two boilers recommended if at some point one of the two boilers is replaced by high efficiency modular boilers as proposed, 75,000. Mm -hmm. Those boilers would not require this modification, and yeah. I'm not sure. I so, think that's something different than what you're talking about getting fixed that yeah. the insurance paid for. Right, the insurance paid for the cracked boiler. So okay. what Bob is saying is to prevent 
for uh, the future. future, we would put in these thermal shock protectors. Right. Sort of, and I, I, from my understanding, they're like, you know, those things you use on your computer, so if the lightning hits it, it doesn't. Yeah, except um, more than But again, <laughs> um, as, I, as Peter and I were oh, speaking sure. before the meeting, it has recently come to our attention that the town, again, is doing a town-wide efficiency study of the heating and everything, and I don't know where we're included in that. Right. And if they're, if, if, what, why would we want to do all these repairs to the oil tanks and put these thermal shocks in if they're going to recommend us replacing a heating system? So I think oh. that we would be a little premature to do this without that final report. Having said that, as I was telling Peter earlier, the last time they did this, <laughs> they wanted us to heat the building with, with pellets. And me and Bob were like, is there any other school district in Massachusetts heating their building with pellets? Because we're not going to be the guinea pigs on that one. And that, and that never went, nothing ever went anywhere with that. So, I, I agree with what I, I'm hearing you say is that we have two options. One of them is to spend a little money in the medium term and then more money later. Or if more money gets, someone spends more money to, to get a Brand. low volume in, instead of a, a patch, instead of a Band-Aid then you can save money total. You're saying that the town is uh, going through some sort of, I want to make sure that this is on that, or this is on the radar. Well, if, the, I think this was a breakdown in communication because Bob was unaware and I was unaware that they were doing another efficiency study. Okay. Okay, so now Bob came to me and said, um, I don't know if we should continue with, with with replacing the water heater if it comes out in the efficiency report that we should be doing something Replace different. It, yeah, yeah. And I said, well, I think regardless of what the efficiency report says, having a smaller water heater is going to save us money. Yeah. And it's been approved, and the town approved it, and the select board approved it, and the capital projects, and if they all knew this efficiency thing was going on, even though we didn't, I would think that they thought it was a smart idea to, to move forward with it now. I, I've heard in my discussions at, at Town Hall, I've heard nothing other than, let's get this done. Okay. Okay. And, we, you know, even knowing that this whole audit of town building was going on, it was like, no, this one we got to do it regardless because we're just wasting money, you know, with a whole bigger boiler operation than makes any sense. And so. So you're hearing smaller water heater? Just for that, that one part. I mean, that's one of the two capital projects we got, <coughs> we got approved at Town Meeting. Okay. That one in the security system, um, and it got. You're not talking about the temper, the temporary thing. No, I'm talking about the the real smaller. I'm talking about the big water heater. Yeah. Okay, that was going to be replaced with a much smaller one. Right. Okay. Outstanding. And yeah, everybody, you know, they're all in favor of it. Like, do it. Outstanding. So I just got an email today from Sherry Patch, which uh, kind of saying, she wrote, just the grant we discussed. Let me know if you need help applying. Well, first of all, I don't apply for grants. Um, and it's Municipal Energy Technical Assistant Grant, Municipal, Massachusetts Clean Energy Center Seeking Heat Smart Communities, and are you ready for solar? Well, so I don't know what she wants me to do with this. <laughs> um, and again, I don't write grants, so if the superintendent were here, I'd push it on to her or him and say, what do you want to do with this? Well, we already got the... I mean, we're not looking at solar for electric because we got yeah, the whole system. So I need to talk to Sherry about this because I don't know what she thinks that I'm going to apply for because it, it's for municipals or regionals, and Sunderland's not covered by a regional, okay. only Frontiers. So I, I, I'm, I'm going to have to talk to Sherry because I don't understand what she wants me to do with this. Okay. Um, getting back to just the overall, you know, plan for the use yep. of, of available funds. Um, I don't disagree with anything you've done. The only thing that I'm wondering is that you obviously don't know yet what the amount, available amount is going to be. Correct. Okay. We never do. We never do. We have a, our next meeting's not going to be till September. Correct. And all this stuff's got to be decided. Is there any sense in, you know, setting up some way that you just sort of, you know, let us know information and if anybody wants to we you do. know come complain to you and so we on do. that that can be done or if we can so you know. and that's what i'm saying even if, like pass a motion and say you know our, our recommendation for putting you know you know some amount 
back into school choice. Into school choice, and then use discretion on on the other items, subject to input from Bob and Paul, and mm -hmm. and, uh, and and you know, and what the, you, you know that in the needs that you know right. in the building for thing, you know things that. Um, so, so, so they hear a motion for uh, yeah. shades and carpet for the office. Well, no, I think the I mean, motion. I think the motion should just be that you make a motion that I put so much money into school choice and the balance of the money to be used at the principal's discretion okay. in concert with um, technology and director of maintenance and director of business services. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And 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 again, and even more into school choice. It, 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 what would you recommend it, for putting it, in school you know, choice? Yeah. What What do you recommend for school choice? To me, that's hard right now because I didn't know about this oil tank stuff. Um, well, the oil tank, I don't think we're moving on the oil tank in the near future. Yeah, I, well, we need to put the gauge on because we can't do automatic delivery without the gauge. So we've got to get the gauge fixed. Okay. Oh, they won't, oh, we can't get automatic delivery without it. Well, that's why um, our, our historian's been resistant to it because the last time someone's gauge didn't work, when they had automatic delivery, they overflowed, and then we had an oil spill, and we don't want that. So David's been very conservative in Could his be a order. Science experiment. I know. Um, we don't want hazmat here. <laughs> we don't want a hazmat exercise out here. So th that's been David's hesitancy to okay. put it on automatic delivery. But if the gauge is fixed, then we have the automatic delivery, and we don't have the problem that we've had in the past two years of we oh. run out of oil. <laughs> How much just to fix the gauge, though? I don't did, know. Does he have that on? Yeah, it was on the sheet. There was on page two. It was. Uh, the number quoted was uh, can, with a refurnished unit, fifteen hundred bucks. Okay, um, so let's do that. Let's do the oil tank for like we'll do the oil tank um, gauge. Um, I, I think it was gauge and sensors and stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not sure that was. A, but he said yeah, and that was um, a refurbished, so it's yeah. not necessarily going to work. It's at risk. It's, it's a right. refurb job. Said, it's not yeah. a no. Device and sensor is no longer manufactured. Uh, some risk involved, but needs to be done. Which is, I think, which, which would lead to the bigger conversation. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What's the total number we're looking at right now? Right now, it, it, we're, we're, at, we're at about 80000 but we have the, the bills that have come in from today until the end of the year, which we don't know. And we know we have to have the fourth quarter billing for the uh, central office services. So I'm guessing if that would be 30 and we've got 80, we'd have about 50. So I'm saying at, I think we could definitely put $25,000 back into school choice. I was thinking, that was a number I was thinking to say no less than 25,000 unless there was some okay, so why extraordinary it? thing in here that we're not, that we had to contemplate. So if we can't, if we can't get the, the, so I know Ben wants the carpet redone. So yeah. if we, if, if we, if the only thing we can do is put, to put the 25 back, if we had to reduce it by getting the gauge and the front office carpeting done, are you guys good with that? Yeah, 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 again, I think this is like, this is subject to, to just discretion. Right. Just I think I think this is a kind of guideline for what we're looking for. Would want to know the price, total price as well. Right. And right. Bob's on vacation, so, but I know we yeah. use Mercer Carpet, so I can get I can probably get them on the phone and get them out here this okay. week for um, for an estimate. Mm -hmm. um, are you gonna be here the most of the week? I'll call you tomorrow. This week? I'll call Mercer tomorrow yeah. and see when okay. they can come out. Yeah. Okay. And do you have to give the town when you encumber stuff, you have to give the town like specific I have to things. give purchase order numbers with the vendor. Right. The only time um, I don't have to do that is if something has to go out to bid, then I make it out to ourselves and put out to bid for such and such. Okay. And then, then I'm allowed to change the vendor once the bid is, is, okay. is completed. Okay. So from what I'm understanding now, 25000 the motion as we're working towards it, it's going to be 25000 into school mm -hmm. choice uh, to finish the shade project, yep. do the carpets, and technology. The, uh, oil tank. the oil tank, and then after that, um, the remainder under technology, correct? Yeah. Yes. Yep. All right. So, but just to and make then I, I would I would add just as a, a dem, any if, if uh, you don't move on technology necessarily if 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 you start finding Sometimes. there's different things and, mm -hmm. and you're not ready to make that jump immediately any remainder will be applied to school choice. Abs absolutely. Because you can always move that yeah. in the in the fall. Yeah, for some, if there's, right. I mean, ideally, obviously, there's certain things that'd be nice to have them in place what, for day Patty, one. What would um, adding 
the electrical outlets fall under. A as we increase the number of devices in the rooms, the power strips are filling up. Hmm. That's a Bob Lesko question, and then we get that same question because if we if we go with the new proposal, our our lease is up on the copiers, um, and one of the proposals is to get rid of that huge color machine over there that costs a million dollars to mm -hmm. buy toner for, mm -hmm. and replace it with a copier that will be outside the office, which will stop interruptions from Mrs. Kidder's teaching right, by people coming in and using that. But we'd have to get new electrical out there, and I don't have a price on that yet either. And you guys haven't made the decision. You're still waiting for feedback from your teachers mm -hmm. if they mm -hmm. like that. So it would, yeah. So it would involve potentially moving. We have two copiers right now in our copy room, both black and white, um, and would be taking one of those and moving green. it down to this hallway right here. Right, but making or no, we take your color one out of the office and put it out here. Right. And then get yep. rid of that monstrosity that's costing us a lot of money. So you'd have I a black and white. I thought it was adding a second color copier. You're correct. So we would be right. at so three because the money we'll save by not doing that, we can pay right. for a lease on the third machine. So yes. But that would be an electrical right. cost to get that installed because we don't have a drop, uh, a network mm -hmm. drop there, and we don't have a. a and I think the. Adding electrical outlets in the classroom that would, you know, be a phased project. Yeah. As well. Okay. So right now I have the motion that the school committee would like the following year-end priorities: to put twenty-five thousand dollars to school choice, and the balance to be used at the principal's discretion to replace the oil tank gauge, carpeting shades, and technology. Keith, did you make that motion? I, I was just writing it, so it made yeah, it easier. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'll move that. Second. Okay. And did, did that include blinds? So yeah, I did yeah, put yeah. shades in there. Yeah. Shades, blinds. I, I would, uh, you know, and I think, again, there's the word discretion in there. So if there's something that we yeah. didn't contemplate that clearly, it, you know, a takes priority precedent. takes, yeah. you know, priority, then. You gotta trust us that we yeah. can, we that exactly we're there is that that and, and that so is embedded into this. That's fine as well. Like if there's a, a building concern, if we get a postcard from Hawaii, then we'll we'll, we'll be talking in September. But. <laughs> if you come up with something, if if you come up with something much different, maybe you could just send an email out saying yeah. we're doing yeah. this, yeah. and that way, yeah. if I hear something from people in town, then I already know what's happening right. or something the, like that. The only other um, thought that has come to mind at, at, at this point, um, some of our classroom windows are in need of repair. Right. Um, and that's on the, the f two to five year plan. That, that gets pretty expensive. And yeah. That's, yeah, right. So, I, and, I, and I was gonna say earlier that you know, as we've started to see, more and more things are popping up with the, the structural side of the building and mm -hmm. the operations. So that's just something we need to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so can we get a vote on that motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, can I ask one question about the school choice um, page or accounting that mm -hmm. in the budget for next year, mm -hmm. we ended up with an extra amount that we left in school choice for an aid. And we think we already might need it. So well, I didn't know where we stood on that, and so I was hoping that we would be able to save that, but I was also figuring, well, the, the reality is... The reason I'm making that the, recommendation the, is because Mr. Barshevsky thinks we may need another aid at this point, so that has yet to be determined. Mm -hmm. Um, but he thinks that we're going to already be spending that money. Okay, I was sort of hoping we could resist that, but if we can't, we can't. Again, another issue that's been, uh, und I've got a couple others that want to do some hiring, and um, I, I need to get together with Mr. Modesto and and get that get those approved by a superintendent. I can't approve a new hire uh, for a school that's not within my purview. Right. I can just recommend whether there's funds. Okay. 
And I wouldn't be surprised if within a couple of years there's some move jointly, you know, by this this school working with the town to come up with a plan of like dealing with these, you know, building issues that are gonna be more than stuff that's fixed by ten thousand here and twenty thousand there. And that that's going to be something that you know we got to get everybody on board, you know, mm-hmm. thinking it's a good idea, and then you take it to the town, you know, you can get support for it. And so I think that'll be a process that's coming down the road, and whether that's a year from now or a couple years from now, but I would not be at all surprised. That ought to be the process. And, and how how do we determine? Um, well, one it would be based on need, but as far as capital projects are concerned, like what's What's a realistic? I mean, this year was around thirty thousand mm-hmm. for our two capital mm-hmm. projects. Mm-hmm. What's what's a unreasonable amount to ask for each year, and, and does that I, I, I think is that dependent on other projects in town? Well, also? And I think we we don't want to forget, depending on how big the project is, um, that there's also MSBA money out there that Correct. we would get reimbursed for. So, like, Correct. if we needed to put a new heating system in we could go through the accelerated repair project. They'll do windows and doors. Uh, if all our windows and doors need to be replaced, that could be something that could be considered. And we are, our, our rate here in Sunderland is probably the highest of the four towns because our reimbursement rate is probably the highest than the other three towns because we have the highest free and reduced lunch population, which adds a lot of points to your reimbursement number. Um, what we have been doing <coughs> was when you do the accelerated repair project, it's a it's competitive. So they look. So we would when Superintendent Barrett was here, we didn't want to submit more than one project a year because we didn't want to compete against ourselves. So we had done we did the Deerfield roof, which was our most urgent need, and then everything kind of fell by the wayside. And we're and now Frontier's doing talking about doing a big borrowing, not using any MSBA funding. Right. So that could be something that you got we discuss. No, I, I'm assuming that's coming, okay? And I'm and I'm again keeping contact with the folks over there that get involved in this sort of stuff. And mm-hmm. you know, I anticipate the process is going to be we're going to get this whole building order, and then when we sit down in you know late fall, early winter, the town will once again submit whatever it feels like submitting in projects. But the whole you know both Bob's plan plus what we get from this order is all going to all that stuff is going to be on the table. And then it's going to be like, okay, we got to start talking about what we're going to try and package up, okay, that we can work through this, um, uh, you know, the state program to, to cover a, a sizable chunk of the cost and, you know, run that. Now, whether that gets done by, you know, uh, whether that gets submitted, I think the next, I think the submissions, Maisie had something that said submissions for that have to happen in February. Uh, no, December. They uh, December. Well, they open. They open, open. in January. Okay. But you've got to start getting ready for that window to open in December by getting all your data together. Right. And so I don't know. Again, first thing is we got to get the report back from these other building folks that came. Okay. And then, you know, I would guess that during this fall, there will be a bunch of discussions over the, you know, town, you know, town-wide about what we're going to do with buildings. And, you know, I, I would guess that from the point of view of the school, that may well be presented as a separate package of stuff because of the financing possibility Correct. with the state. And so it would be, um, and to me, having that possibility of getting substantial, you know, one of the questions always is, you know, first thing is, can we get somebody else to pay for it? Well, here we got a situation where we get somebody else to pay for a big chunk of it. But, right, but the problem is, is that it, where the problem comes in is the town has to do the entire borrowing right. for the entire amount, right. and then they get reimbursed by I MSBA. don't think the town's got a problem with okay, that. So. The town has not got a, town's got a very good uh, uh, credit, rating. credit rating, and the town is also, uh, you know, very aware of, let me put it this way, the town would, I can't imagine the town wouldn't be happy with doing that, knowing that we're going to fix up the building and get payment from someplace mm-hmm. else. If it's got to front the money first by borrowing it, I don't think that's a problem. Okay. I, I, yeah. Yeah. I'm not worried about that. I'm, I'm more worried about, you know, we're going to have to come up with a big package of stuff here and see what we, see what we got to do. Uh, so even if we file that, now we're in line. 
And no, that's, no? that's, that's it accelerated? if we were, if the accelerated repair, we would know right away. Okay. And then if we didn't get funding the first year, we just refresh it the second year. Okay. Right. Um, it's when you go for the build, like a, uh, like a building renovation project where we're going to renovate the whole building that's, or you're looking for a new building, which right. we're not doing. Right, right. Um, but again, um, even though I, I, I say that, um, <laughs> And then I think about Ben, even though NESDEC saying our, our population is going to be declining, Mr. Barshevsky's got issues because our pre-K population keeps growing. This building was made for K to six and our pre-K to six, and he's afraid he's going to run out of room soon. Right. Um, and maybe we would be looking for a renovation because we need more room. And then that is a couple year process. You've got to get in line. And you know that because you've been through that with Amherst. Yeah. So it would make sense to, after the study comes in, to then think about taking the next steps. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm just thinking about stuff like, you know, your major components of the building, including, you know, win including windows or I don't know what else is going to turn right. out. That, that we've got projects that got to be done that are going to be more than the, you know, 30,000, let's say, that we asked for this year, like way more than that. And then, okay, now we've got to get all our you know, get, go through the whole process and get the submission into the state. And if the town's got to front the money by borrowing, I'm sure the town will be happy to do that because it's getting a good deal. Okay, and that's, again, yeah. so anyway, I'll keep my, I'll keep in, keep you posted on anything I hear on that. In the meantime, we're just waiting for that next yeah. report. Yeah. All right, so I, identify, identify it all yeah. and let other people figure out how to prioritize yeah. and, yeah. Right. Just and we, find the money. Right. We're given, we want to give visibility to all the problems we've got here yep. with the building. Make sure it's visible and then it's mm -hmm. like everybody shares the problem. I just got one credit to back way back up on the finances about the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. Because the, even with Frontier and all the towns now, it's all interconnected. <coughs> um, as a um, whole wide view of how the changes to the food services because I, I frontier again, it's, it looks like it's, get, it's trending in the right direction. So mm -hmm. district wide, everything together, the moves that we've made over the last couple of years, next year is an important year. Hmm. But there's going to just always know there's going to be two schools that we're probably never going to make a profit at, and those are the two small ones, Waitley and mm -hmm. Conway, because by statistically we should only have one worker, but mm -hmm. you can't have one worker. Right. You need two workers, so we're always going to be. I don't know that we'd ever get to even a break-even point with them, but we can lessen the loss. Mm -hmm. And that is, that our goal this year was to lessen the loss. Mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately here, we missed. Everywhere else, we're lessening the loss. Yeah. But it, again, we missed here only because of the uh, one-time consultant cost. What, we were only paying $10,000, and then this year that cost us $14,000. So it was that extra four. If we didn't, even if we didn't have that extra four, we'd only be losing about a thousand dollars, and that would have been lessening the loss. Yeah. So I think we're, our numbers are up. I mean, the the the, the breakfast are and what really is surprising me and and, and, and pleasing me is that our, our adult meals are really taking off. So um, Mary's doing a great job attracting our staff to eating lunch at the school, which really helps our program. So we voted, I can't remember, did we vote on Yeah, you did. We're on the we're cafeteria public, team leader now. Okay. Oh. Public comment. No, no, no one there. Okay. Uh, yes, cafeteria team leader. Um, we had, I just, we had, uh, a, basically we all thought it was fine, but there was a little bit of concern about uh, things that the selectmen were doing about studies of personnel and about so on. And so we asked to delay the vote last meeting and I wrote up what the issue was and sent it to selectmen and then I didn't hear any complaint, but I actually went to a meeting and talked to David Pierce, who's a selectman that deals with personnel matters, and said, I just want to make sure, do you have any problem with this? He said, no, this is fine. Okay, great. All right. Yeah. So, uh, buddy, and Peter, no disrespect, but they can't tell us what... No, but this no. is, but this is, don't, we don't, don't want, we don't want to get advice. Yeah, we don't want to, there's no this, reason this to... This is not 
adding any personnel. This right. person already exists in the building. She's right. already performing the duties. So it's, it, it's just a change in the pay scale to, to compensate her for the extra duties that she's already doing for us and has been doing yep. for us. No, I, and I think we were all, like Peter said, we were all, we were all in agreement with that. Just, but just because of We've been in a selectman meeting where they've been talking about this sort of stuff, and we just right. want to let them know. We just wanted to to, to, to yeah. kind of just yeah. right exactly. So I'm happy. Before, since we didn't have to vote on it in that meeting, we kind of wanted to right. get ahead, do the communication, and then vote. So it that's here. been done, and it's no problem. So, so I'm happy voting for it. So we need a motion and a second to um, have the cafeteria team leader position approved. Uh, so moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And then, I don't know why she broke it up, but then we need a motion and a second to approve the, the salary schedule. Okay. And we didn't have any problem with that last time. I don't right. Really no. right. So, uh, yes, yeah, so I'm moved again. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Thanks. And this will be retro, well, it will be retro back to, uh, actually it won't be because we appoint, we didn't have someone performing this role. Um, and then we were going to, the person we had targeted to take this role was going to leave us for another position. So we made her an interim and she's been getting the pay. So there, I don't think there will be a retro on this one. Um, because we have been paying her, but I'll have to check on that. But if anything, it'll be retro back to the date that we made her the offer because um, we didn't want to lose her. Okay. Thank you. Continue. All right. I'll work to hear. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's why I was looking for the policies. Um, I have the next one as the non-union salary recommendation. Oh, I thought we just so, voted so on we just that. Voted that. Nope, that was the team leader. Now this is... Um, no, we had two no, votes. We, we took a second vote on the non-union stuff, too. No, the, the vote was to, to the team leader salary schedule. Now we're doing the non-union salaries. Okay. okay. There we'll are two votes for the team leader. Two, two votes for the team leader. Okay. Create the position, create the salary schedule. Yeah. Okay. And then now we're doing the non-union. So moved. And second. Discussion? All in favor? Now you're on policy. Now we're on policy. All right. Let's see. And do we have those in front of us? Greg, you were on that committee. I wasn't. I, I've been on that committee. <laughs> so we'll like know, lead that discussion. You need, yeah. 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 You need, well, let's put it this way. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, can I make a motion just for to get this going? Yeah. I move that we approve all the policies as submitted. Second. Discussion? So, yeah, so any uh, insights or uh, particular particular uh, insights you have for us? So, let's see. All of this stuff is supposedly going someplace where it can be easily searched online. Correct. And that's going to make it, and it, it's already there. Yeah. And then they'll be updated. Exactly. I okay. don't believe the thorniest issues are on. Yeah, I think some of those have been punted. Uh, so these are all relatively benign. Uh, language changes yeah, as language proposed changes. by the MS MASC. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And they're the ones that host our, <coughs> our, our policy. So if anyone's looking, there should be a link from the web page, but if not, just go to masc.org and then you, you you can find Frontier listed and you Frontier Union 38 and they can pull up all the policies. And it's pretty cool because you can put in, if you wanted to know everything about busing, you can put in the word busing and it'll show you every policy regarding busing. I think the only question was the GB1 and it's not included. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. That was the major sticking point. All right, so in that case, all in favor? Aye. Aye.
to a uh, new business here. Indeed. And that would be the school Google. improvement plan. Did you submit it last month? Yes. Okay. Yep. And so what's the process? Do we, how, how, how much involvement does the school committee have in terms of, uh, you know, if we approve the plan and then it has to get implemented, one assumes, so it has to get, you know, you make progress towards the goals in the school improvement plan, and is that something that, I think at, um, do we get reports, uh, you know, on some schedule? Or do we it's through, I mean, again, like kind of through those committee reports that we get from Maisie. Right. It, it is, I mean, school count, it's a, it's an, Led by an interesting council. dynamic, this right. whole school council, the school committees. I mean, school committee obviously has been around for a long time. School council is, um, is more of an ed reform. Yeah, that kind form. of 90s kind of thing. It's, you know, to get to have a sort of broader participation on some. It's more of like a, an advisory board. Right. 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 You know, for the school. Right. No, I, I would just say the <clears throat> the process in um, these seven goals and coming up with these seven goals, uh, one one through three, those were those came from our, our district audits um, that we've had over the past couple of years, um, and and from from those audits, um, the district came up with a strategic improvement plan. Um, but each school is different, and the, the, the strategic improvement plan was more universal. Um, so I took that plan to the staff, and our staff identified the priorities for, for our building. Um, and so um, I then formed a building-based strategic team, and we've met 10 times throughout the year um, after school. Um, yeah to focus on moving forward with, with various um, areas of that plan. Um, and then the other four goals um, were developed by staff and council members. And so are you looking for school committee involvement in this process other than just you know, our reactions to the, uh, whatever schedule you report to us on? I, I think feedback. Feedback, Feed, yeah. Feedback is important, and if um, the school committee has their pulse on anything, um, that would potentially fall under the umbrella and purview of the school council, then, yeah. Okay. Or if you want clarification on something, then. Okay. So, uh, hmm. um, so we are supposed to approve. I didn't see a vote required. In there. No, it says a vote in there. There's a vote. There's yeah. a, we're working on these going forward. These are you know, the, the driving guidelines for um, <clears throat> teaching and learning going forward the next few years. That's the that would be what this is for. Mm -hmm. Yes and no. I mean, I, I think, yes, we, we keep this in mind mm -hmm. um, and put systems in place to work on each of these areas because that will not, that will help the school regardless whether it's on a school improvement plan or not. But, you know, I, I don't think what is necessarily on this plan is the only thing that the school will be focused okay. on. So I, the only thing I was gonna ask is maybe some specificity, and I don't wanna blow this up way more than it really needs to be. Sure. I, I, I love simplicity. Yep. Um, uh, I thought goal number five, create, maintain a safe environment for all SES community members. Sure. Like, what does that mean? Didn't we have several backup pages last time that, yeah. again, I left yeah, them at home, that were like yeah. the details on each one of these. This was the summary page. Okay. Um, I think there was a lot more. So yeah. the bullet points for that were ass assessment of early childhood playground, okay. um, yeah. implement bullying training, create SES expectation, expectations school-wide, continue emergency response planning and drill, appliance for classroom, windows and doors, um, fix doors that don't shut properly. 
Where can I find it? That, that was in last, last month. Last Passage, month. maybe? Yes, that was part of... And you did include your security cameras on there. Yes, this is a living document that can yeah. be... Add your security, <laughs> add the addition of security cameras for your entrance and exit. There's a lot of money on that. Honestly, that, that may have been added since our last meeting. So we need a motion to approve the school improvement plan, I believe. Mm -hmm. So I'll move. So move. Second. All in favor? I guess Keith goal five wouldn't be considered a smart goal. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not even go there. Yeah. Yeah. You can write all our smart goals. <laughs> Keep my mouth shut. <laughs> it's measurable. I'm not gonna let you go me into it. <laughs> What's that? I'm not gonna let you go me into it. <laughs> Almost done. I am not a fish. I will not be baited. <laughs> Almost done. What is smart? What is it? What's uh... specific, measurable? realistic to, uh, target t time some people say time if you go and you look it up it, it's not one acronym there are a few different flavors I'll Google I've, it I've heard it comes out timely evaluation yeah yeah yeah, yeah. No, I, know. I know I get yeah I know the context I just never knew the acronym like uh, yeah that's one of those reports Is that right? right yep yep capital projects who put the capital projects on there, Patty? Was that? Oh, uh, that was you, but Bob couldn't come because he's on vacation. Oh, right, okay. So we're just, uh, I've got another report that I have. Um, se security cameras. Right. We've had, uh, Scott Paul um, is getting quotes from three different vendors. Um, Good. We met with one vendor last week, and um, Scott, the vendor, and myself walked the entire school, looked at what we had, um, areas of, of concern, and so they'll be putting that quote together. It's Scott said the realistic realistic timetable is sometime in the fall where that whole system will be replaced. Um, it's just not an easy, you know, you go choose a vendor and it happens the next day. And we want to be since it does cost so much money, we want to be thoughtful about it. Um, Absolutely, but that's definitely moving in the right direction. Um, as far as the um, other project, I'm not sure where Bob is with that. I think Bob's ready to go. Yeah. Bob's, I think, going to be getting ready to go so that it's done over Great. the summer. Right. My, my only concern was that they'd be done by, <coughs> say, the first of the year because I don't yeah. want to be going to a capital project committee meeting and they say, you know, and they right. say, well, sorry, you know, we gave you the money last year and you haven't done anything with it, so why should we give you any more? So. Sure. As long as, as long as we're on a schedule that would address that, then that's cool. Yeah. Great. All right. Any committee reports? I've just got something I got to, I've been wanting to say the whole meeting, which is I went on last Friday evening, um, and I'm sure I wasn't the only school committee person there, to the big tent down there behind town offices to watch the performance that was put on by our elementary school, and I just thought it was wonderful. Yeah. And I wanted to say that uh, uh, my appreciation to uh, the whole school, and that, you know, the principal, all the staff in their various roles, uh, parents, and especially all the kids that were doing it, um, your involvement with the town, okay, it was all, Honestly, you know, I went there with low expectations because this is an elementary <laughs> school, you know, this is not a set of trained actors or something like that. And I was just really impressed by how well it came off, by the enthusiasm of the participants, by the enthusiasm of the crowd. It was a substantial crowd. Um, I talked to a number of people there while, you know, it was going on and I was getting really positive vibes. Uh, from people and here we were it was a school it was like it was so cool to have the school a major part of the town's celebration 
of the 300th birthday. And, you know, it was just like, to me, it was like you couldn't have done better PR for the school to be doing this. And I know I talked to Ben just for a moment afterwards to express my congratulations. And he said, you won't believe how much work this was. Yeah. Okay. And I'm sure it was a ton of work, but when you put in all the work like that, it's so nice when it comes off well, and it really came off well. And, and that wasn't me, me complaining, it was just... It's just a statement, it's just a statement of the reality. Right. You know? They've been working right. at it for a long time. Yeah. But there was a, and I'm sure there's also like tremendous education value in this whole thing too. So it's not like just, oh, we're wasting, you know, we're sort of wasting time to sort of do something here that doesn't matter. I mean, there's a lot of education that goes on in this stuff. And, and I, again, I was just, I want to express my thanks to the to the whole school for doing that. I, I think it just it speaks to um, the power of collaboration, and when you have a bunch of folks performing their own individual roles for a for a common goal, it, it shows what can can be done. Um, and that's not you know just the, the teaching staff at at Sunderland, but it's the, our community members. Um, we have so many different people help out. Um, that helped make it possible. So it was, it was special. It was and it was neat that you got the Historical Society involved. And, right. and you know, so it yeah. really did, you know, it really belonged there. You yeah. know, it was telling a story of the history of the town, and that's what yeah. the birthday was celebrating. It was celebrating that we've been in town for 300 years, and there was a school front and center. It was very cool. We, um, and that was actually part of my uh, principal's report, but um, the in town residents. Linda Lapaca and Mary Warner um, helped contribute to the historical skits. Mm -hmm. um, and Linda gave us a bunch of different stories of Sunderland, a, a few of which we did in include, well, one being where townspeople were um, concerned about the huge number of geese that were just taking over the town. So at one point, um, they kind of boxed up the geese and sent them down river. Um, so I was just, you know, thinking about what, what would that look like with uh, acting that out. I think we had our, you know, kindergartners dressed as a bunch of geese, but. Um, <laughs> so, and I had a few other people I wanted to um, thank, town, townspeople, uh, Val Voorhees, who helped with costumes, Diane Mercamas, who helped with costumes, uh, Kim Williams um, from uh, Duke Center of Performing Arts, um, who helped with consultation and she came to a few of our all school skit rehearsals um, to, to help us um, teach the kids how to be better actors and project. Um, Brent Hale um, who did the program design, um, he designed the program and the, um, the large poster that, um, that you probably saw, Catherine Hand, the library director. Um, and then I also, um, we had 22 or 23 staff members that played various roles in, in supporting the project. So it was, it was pretty neat. And the students, you know, they did a phenomenal job. So it was nice. I don't know how many of you managed to see it. I, I saw Doug there. I think everyone was there. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Just how great. about the fireworks? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I than they I were anticipating. unbelievable. Yeah. Best fireworks I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, right, that's true. And I haven't been to, like, some of the big city ones in a long time, but, like... I wanted that, to, that's what I wanted to come for, and I didn't make it. I, I didn't... I, th I thought they were extraordinary. Mm -hmm. And, it, yeah. Do you guys know you made 91? You know how they have the um, flashing solar? It mm -hmm. said that the Sunderland Bridge was going to be closed oh, yeah. for the for the celebration. So every night when I was going home, I would forget that reminder that the bridge is going to be closed. I'm like, that's pretty cool. So everyone's making that. <laughs> I thought it was great too. I went down there and it was way it was more than I expected. Um, and I thought that could have thrown the kids too. And I thought they did great. Yeah. The whole production was fantastic. And I and as I was walking out i was getting positive feedback from a lot of people and it was this link of the school and the town how how that's what makes uh this place really good really yeah. special repeated from different people
I, I think everyone's going to, going to remember that performance right. just for, for years. And it, um, it turns out one of our um, school council members, Cindy Benjamin, she, what at times this year was speaking about Sunderland's 250th celebration because she was in an elementary school and how significant that was for her in her life and how much of it she still remembers. Um, so I think, I think we were able to provide our students with that same opportunity, which is pretty neat. Yeah. And the fact that, you know, it basically you picked up the whole school and you put it down over there behind the library and the town offices and, you know, just then did your business. And people didn't have to come some separate pace like over here to the school to see this. It was just mm -hmm. right there, part of the town and all the other town celebrations. And it was a, you know, key part of it, so. And as a staff, we held our first planning meeting last summer uh -huh. for the performance. Um, and it just took many different forms throughout the course of the year. And, and as we hit probably February or so, it started to kind of streamline into what mm -hmm. we got, so it was neat. Cool. Um, are we just, I guess, moving into the go to principal's your report? report? Yeah, sure. Um, towards the end of May, we held our Sunderland in Action Day, um, which I spoke about during the May meeting. Um, but we had a few different off-campus community service projects taking place, and that was at the New England Health Center Nursing Home, um, and also the Town Library, many projects on campus, uh, mulching the perennial garden, um, transporting 10 yards of loam to the raised bed vegetable garden. Um, we had a parent volunteer, and he replaced the sheathing and the shingles on our early childhood playground roof. Um, so that's, that has a brand new roof, um, it'll last for many more years, and then flower planting, trash pickup, and so it was a very, very good day. In upcoming events, we have our final All School Sing tomorrow morning, and this is a, um, this assembly is always meant to honor our retirees and our departing sixth grade students, but with no retirees this year, it's just gonna be our sixth grade students. Spring carnivals tomorrow night, there's a dunk tank, bounce house, face painting station, snow cones, pot, some potluck dinner items, and then also um, the PTO is providing others items as well. We have our strawberry picking to um, Warner Farm on Thursday, June 21st. Every year, they, uh, I guess, the donation is strawberries um, for the entire school. And so we're doing a walking field trip to the old the new site is on um, South Main Street, but we're going to the site off of Old Amherst Road. Um, field day is Thursday afternoon, and that is always uh, water stations led by our sixth grade students for some fun. And then last day of school is Friday, this Friday, noon dismissal. August 13th, we have our new family welcome social. Um, for the past few years, this has been for kindergarten families, and now we're really trying to extend it to all families who are coming into town um, and starting starting off at Sunderland for the first time. And then the first day of school is August 30th. Teachers report the 29th. We're not thinking about that right now. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't know if I wanted to include that on there. But yeah. <laughs> Days are still getting longer. Yes. Not by much. Not by much. That's right. <laughs> Two days. Yeah. So we don't have uh, any of the reports, Superintendent, to read? No. Uh, Did you vote to approve the school? The plan? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yes. Yep. Right. So all we need is a motion and a second to adjourn. Oh dear, that's a hard motion to make. <laughs> it's been a pleasure working with you this year. Motion to adjourn. Yeah. yeah. Second. Yeah, thank you all so much yeah. for your time. Thank you. You got a great school here and it's, 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 it's a pleasure to be on the committee. Yeah. yeah. It's a real pleasure to, to get it's just a pleasure to have I mean I try to engage people like I engage some people at the 
Friday night thing. You just ask them what they think about the school, and when you get back just such co positive comments, yeah. it's real nice. And so it's just you feel like yeah, we just got to you know we got we still got to keep trying to do things better because that's life. But it's so nice that we're respected. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And that starts right with you. So. It starts with the staff. Well, it's the whole year of the leader, but it's the whole staff. We got a great staff. Cats here. waiting for our uh, yeah. our vote. Oh yeah. All, all in favor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.